Welcome into EPAC All Access here at Coburn Field at David M. Walker Stadium for this Martinsburg Bulldog edition of EPAC All Access. Spencer Dupuy, Nick Verzellini, Colin McLaughlin, happy to have you with us here as we sit down and preview all the EPAC teams throughout the Eastern Panhandle. Now we're doing the Martinsburg Bulldogs and obviously a great season last year ending with the ninth state championship in school history, guys. And uh, retool is the word that everybody likes to use around here. Lost a few, a few key seniors, but retooling this year for hopefully another great season. Yeah, this uh, massive junior class are now seniors this season, so it's going to be a big season to look forward to for Martinsburg coming back offensively and defensively with a lot of last year's starters, guys, especially in that quarterback spot with Ezra Bajant, the brother of Tyson Bajant that we all know from Shepherd University, as well as Murphy Clement the younger brother of Hudson Clement, and that's a name that everybody knows as well around not only here, but the entire state. So it's going to be a fun one to see those two, and it'll be interesting to see how they can replace Hudson when it comes to the yards and the touchdowns he had last year. Yeah, I think uh, Martinsburg definitely is the team in the EPAC uh, this year as they – have been for the past, you know, 10 years or so. So, I mean, the Bulldogs have the talent coming back. You mentioned the quarterback play in Murphy Clement and Ezra Bajan. Those guys are uh, definitely two guys that probably, you know, any team would wish they could offer Martinsburg a trade to get one of them so they can <laughs> fix the two-quarterback issue. But it's not really an issue for Martinsburg because of the way they're able to use both of them. Uh, you know, Murphy can – run a lot he can play other positions and Ezra is a really good thrower of the football Murphy can throw it too so they're just very dynamic duo there and then defensively you know Martinsburg led by Cam Chalice at the linebacker position he returns was one of their best defensive players last year and will be their leader uh, of the defense this year a few holes to fill up front but uh you know Martinsburg has some key guys coming back. E.J. Hendricks, the defensive and offensive lineman who made a lot of plays for them last year on both sides of the ball. So uh, this is a very talented team. That's just naming a few of the weapons that they'll have uh, this season. So uh, you got to figure that Martinsburg is going to be in contention, if not the favorites, to win the state championship once again this year. Uh, it's just how this program has been built. And uh, Coach Britt Sherman has continued the success of Coach Walker. And uh, it's definitely going to be tough to see Martinsburg losing a game in the state this year. Uh, they'll have some tough non-conference games and out-of-state games. But, again, they beat those teams last year. So another you know, close to undefeated season is probably in the works and potentially another state championship. Yeah, and you mentioned that schedule. The only difference on the schedule is the final game of the season as they take Spring Valley off the schedule. Too much travel there. They'll actually head down now to Arlington, Virginia, to play Bishop Ironton at the end of the season for the final week of the regular season. But the whole schedule shapes out to be a mirror image of last year just home versus away differently there and uh, it's going to be obviously you're going to see the same teams you're a little bit familiarity with the out-of-state teams Salem out of Virginia Highland Springs out of Virginia and uh, Riverside out of Ohio and Riverside from what I understand seems to be an even improved team from what they were last year and that was a that was a great classic ball game between two really good schools yeah and all those teams that you just mentioned are now going to be here at Coburn Field so if you're a Martinsburg fan that likes to travel to see the games, the farthest one that you have to go to is that first team you mentioned, Bishop Ireton, there in Alexandria, Virginia. And it's only an hour and a half. The rest of the away games are all against EPAC or opponents. Or Sharando, which is about 45 minutes from Yeah. Just down I-81. So, and, you know, you look at that schedule, it breaks down almost like last year. And, you know, from what I've seen from this Bishop Ironton team, uh, it's kind of hard to tell because it's a private school, so things can really change year to year. Uh, did not have a great season last year, but you never know what 2022 could bring for a private school. That's that a good very point. true. And, and I would say, you know, we talked about Musselman's schedule when we uh, did the Musselman show and how it was probably the toughest schedule in terms of in-state opponents but Martinsburg definitely has I think the toughest overall schedule is not only are they playing you know the the good teams here in the EPAC they got to play those Highland Springs Sharando I think will have a bounce back year after a few down seasons so 
uh, you know, Riverside, Ohio, was probably the t- – well, they had two of their toughest games were the non-state teams. I mean, obviously the loss to Spring Valley was tough, but uh, Martinsburg would avenge that loss in the postseason. Uh, but, you know, Highland Springs came down to the last second. Riverside was – last second comeback by the dogs so um those two games will be really fun there'll be great games here at martinsburg high school so uh it's definitely a very tough schedule and uh that's why i think martinsburg has had so much success is they will play pretty much anybody and uh that those challenges gets you ready for the state playoffs and it helps you helps lead to those state championships. Yeah, and you mentioned they'll play anybody. I was, you know, c- combing through some sound bites uh, to put together one of the promos that we have where you'll hear from every EPAC coach, including Martinsburg head coach Britt Sherman on the show every week. And one of those things was one of the quotes, the very first quote that leads off is Coach Sherman, and he says, you know, you put our guys out there, we'll, they'll play with any of them. And it goes to show when you have to play a team like Highland Springs out of Virginia that produces so many Division One talents – that it just goes to show the kind of team and, and the grit on this team and the, the program that has been built here at Martinsburg High School and has continued to move forward even without legendary head coach David Walker that's now at Concord University and under head coach Britt Sherman, who was an assistant under Walker. Yeah, nine state championships since 2010, looking for the 10th this year. And just looking at this team, I think it's possible. It definitely is possible. And, you know, retool we talked about earlier in this segment, uh, when you have so many of those guys in this program and the way that this program is run from freshman up to varsity and the feeder systems in the area between the middle school team and, you know, seeing some kids in eighth grade play freshmen because of their age, I think that definitely helps to when you're building a program and trying to get these guys from – even eighth grade, ninth grade, all the way up to senior year and varsity level of football, and it literally starts at the bottom and all the way up to the top. Yeah, and the depth of Martinsburg, too, uh, definitely plays a big factor. You know, they had some big injuries last year from Braxton Todd to Kai Walker. Buzzed over. Yeah, and, you know, those kids go down, and we see guys like Xavion Kendall step up. uh, wide receivers like Roman Pearson fill in for Kai Walker so you know there were numerous guys that would step in if there were injuries and Martinsburg just has it's the complete opposite of what we saw when we were at Washington right I mean they just don't have the kids but Martinsburg has like 70 kids and all of them can play it's very impressive what they're able to do as a program Uh, so even if they were to get a few injuries like this team will find ways to have that next man up mentality and I think that's a big part of uh the Bulldog success. You bring up injuries and that's in it being part of the success of the the amount of kids in this program. I don't think you see a state championship last year if you don't have the caliber of kids you have on this team with those guys that went down, those key position players that were there. I think it's a harder route to a state championship than it was because of the ability for these guys to just plug and play essentially. And one of the guys that I want to mention that I think will have that next man up mentality is a guy that was a freshman last year. We saw be the freshman quarterback, Coy Fagan. He was absolutely dominant in the game that we had last year against Musselman for that freshman game. I think that when he comes up to this varsity level, maybe even possibly this year as a sophomore, if somebody were possibly to get injured, He's somebody that you would really need to watch out for, especially on the offensive side for this Martinsburg team. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll step aside now for a quick break. When we come back on the other side of this break, we'll hear from Bulldog head coach Britt Sherman. You're tuned in to EPAC All Access on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. Back in a little bit. Looking for some nightlife? Then look no further. Laddie's Bar and Grill has a full bar and kitchen, pool table, and entertainment with great food at affordable prices. You can dine in or carry out by calling us at 304-263-5233. Laddie's is open Monday through Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. We serve breakfast all day long, and our lunch and dinner specials are posted every day on our Facebook page. So stop on in to Laddie's Bar and Grill, located at 107 Lutz Avenue in Martinsburg. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here from Coburn Field. We're now joined by Martinsburg Bulldog head coach Britt Sherman. Coach Sherman, last year obviously with ninth team state championship in the last uh, since 2010. Uh, you're back here. 
yet again, ready for another season, Sa mostly the same opponents. Uh, what's your team mentality going into this, to this season? Well, you know, it's a, it's a whole different team, and, um, you know, we we celebrated last year, and, and, and that team was great and, and did a good job and, and, and finished strong and, and won it. And this team is completely different. This team is 0-0. Zero and zero. They've not done anything yet. So, you know, on paper, we've got a lot of guys coming back. But we also had some big losses, you know. And a lot of people want to talk about Hudson, of course, because he was a great player and scored eight touchdowns in that final game. But we also lost the ninth touchdown in that game with Jacob Barrick. So we don't have any touchdowns coming back from that state championship game. And um, we've got three linemen that we need to replace. All our interior guys on the O-line are, are really big losses for us. And um, so – We've got we've got a, a lot of sho big shoes to fill, and and these guys, you know, on paper right now are, are looking pretty good, but they've got to prove it and uh, take one game at a time and really work hard to have a lot of team chemistry and, and play really well, for, play really good football. Third year as head coach for you with this Martinsburg Bulldog team. What have you learned from the past two seasons? Well, I, I know there's a lot more headaches being a head coach. So I've been part of the program for a long time, but uh, you know everything ends with you, and 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 you know a lot of that stuff. I used to gripe at Coach Walker about, and I understand it now. So, uh, but no, it's it's. I tell everybody, you know, it's been about the same, except I have more headaches, and I get to make the schedule. So you know, it's it's just taking over the family and and stepping into that role, and, and you know, I've I've enjoyed it. You know, I've been able to be a head coach of a lot of really really great young men and you know that first year was was tough because those guys didn't do anything wrong and they had to stop playing football and uh that was tough and i think it it, it built character with them and I, I i hope so with me and and with these younger classmen as well and and you know it's just trying to make them the best men they can be as long as well as the best fit football player we talked about it seven on seven how this year is really your first like normal off season compared to the first two years when you had more restrictions due to COVID and stuff. Uh, how would you, I guess, evaluate this this first full off season and what you've seen so far, and what have you liked out of the guys uh, in the off season? Yeah, it's been strange because we've two years we've not had our normal off season, and some of these guys in high school have never had a normal off season. But what I see is is you know I see guys actually being able to develop in the off season and uh, you know we've been able to put a put together a full off season we usually say we have four phases which are you know phase one two and three in the uh, off season and in our summer phase and then of course our end season stuff and, and we've got to do all that this year so we've got to see kids develop we've seen kids make really good numbers in the weight room you know even the guys that didn't pop up in numbers they've you know got better flexibility wise and and hopefully um, helped with injury prevention and and all those things that young athletes need to develop so it's it's been great you know seeing them in there and another thing is a two and, and mentally with for teenagers and and a, a team is to get in there and grind together and spend time together and that we've been able to do that now since January you know in 2020 it was two weeks in July and in 2021 we didn't come in until end of February so you know I've seen seen them get get to be a closer bond together and uh, with all the time that they've been able to spend together this year. And, you know, you talk about how you, as a, as a head coach, you got to make that schedule. And uh, this year, a lot more home games, just the way the scheduling worked out for you guys and interchanged Spring Valley for Bishop Ironton, but mostly the same schedule, just more home games. How's that make you feel as a head coach saying, oh, we're going to be able to bring this team and they're going to be able to stay at home more this year, just the way the scheduling had to work out? Well, I was the crazy person that scheduled all that stuff away that first year, and I, you know, I heard a lot of people question that, and you know, why in the world are we going here and there and everywhere this year? But the reason that I did it is because we could have this this home slate this year. So all those teams are coming to Coburn this year, and um, you know, we have great support. Our community is amazing, and so we get those those folks get to come out and see those teams, and they're playing here on our turf this year, and we don't have to go you know, four, five, three hours away to go play these games, they get to come here this year. So I did that so the Martinsburg community could see great teams coming into Coburn and Walker Stadium and, and be able to come support us like they always do and, uh, you know, have big games here. 
Let's transition now into talking specifically about the team, starting with the offense, quarterback-wise, bringing back Ezra and Murphy. How much have they grown working together this offseason while still having to split the role as a starting QB? Well, they're just they're great kids, and um, they, they, they root for each other. They're friends, and, uh, you know, they've worked really hard. Ezra's grown and developed um, every year. You know, he's grown a couple inches. He works really hard in the weight room. He works hard out of the weight room doing his own stuff and his own training. And um, he's been able to, because of Tyson, go all over the country this year and train with some of the best quarterback trainers in the nation. So, you know, he probably knows more about quarterback skills and, and individual drills than probably I do at this point because he's just been around those guys so much. And, um, you know, he – I told a lot of the guys when Tyson went to portal and I got a bunch of phone calls, I'm like, you know, Tyson may or may not be interested in your school, but I have another guy that's the same cat that's going to be the same thing that Tyson is, you know, at that level here in a couple of years. And, you know, a lot of them thought I was crazy then too, but it just, he, he that's the same way he is. He's meticulous. He, he works really hard and he does, you know, a lot of things really well to make himself the best football player and quarterback that he can be. And then, um, you know, Murphy had a rough off season because of his injury. And uh, he, he didn't get to do a lot of the stuff that, uh, you know, would have helped him develop probably his lower body especially. And, you know, I had the same injury he had um, at, at a point in my career. And uh, it's not an easy thing to come back from. It's it's one of those things that I think he's, he's healthy right now, but it's still a nagging type injury that, that will probably be with him a long time. And, um you know, he didn't get to do that as much, but he got to do a lot of upper body stuff. He got to be around um, throwing the ball. He throws the ball right now better than, of course, he ever has. But it actually was surprising when he came to a couple of the flex days in uh, June and watching the ball pop out of his hand. And, um, you know, yesterday he's throwing 50-yard passes, and it looks just, you know, seamless. It's, it's just effortless with him. So his upper body strength's gotten a lot better. And um, he's not lost any of his speed. He was able to do the camp circuit this year. And, you know, going to – you know, we've we've known he's an elite athlete for a long time. But going to the University of Michigan camp and running the fastest time of any quarterback or running back at the University of Michigan camp is is something that's, that's pretty special. And, um, you know, he's gotten one offer from Old Dominion. And I expect more of them to come in uh, once he uh, starts – having a great junior season and, and for some of the things he's going to do for us this year. You mentioned earlier uh, losing three offensive line starters. Um, now that you've kind of had the ability to get in full pads and, and hit a little bit, what have you seen from some guys that could uh, step up into those offensive line starting positions? Yeah, so um, we have three returning starters. Fortunately, when Aiden was a little banged up at the end of the year, he just played defense and Wes Hancock stepped in and of course we have EJ so those three um, are, are going to be integral parts of that line but then we also had Rashad Reed um, come to us from Woodruff South Carolina and, and Rashad was the strongest kid on the team when he arrived he's kind of a Christian slack um, strong big kid uh, he's got a heavy, big motor and um, he'll play both sides of the ball for us and um, he's a great kid and um, we're happy to have him. And then in that other spot, we've had uh, right now starting for us at the scrimmage tomorrow will be Ladanian Weller at our left guard spot. And Ladanian is a kid. I mean, sometimes he doesn't look like a whole lot, but he works works hard and he's put in his time. And um, he's only a junior as well. So we have we have no seniors at all on our, in the, in the, on our offensive line. And when Eric King comes down as a hybrid D end, he's the only senior we have on either line. So – you know, that's, it's a younger group, but, um, you know, it's a lot of quality in that younger group. Um, and, you know, we've got Peyton Kaufman, Xerxes Yancey, and Brady Breeden also trying to work and work their way into spots there, um, kind of competing with Ladanian and, and some of those other guys for spots on that offensive front. What does that defensive unit look like this year? So the same guys there, so Rashad's kind of a nose type guy, like a big, big kind of – um, bulldog type kid, uh, big and strong, and then of course EJ and Aiden will be uh, will be DNs with um, with also Eric King and Xerxes Yancey there, and then Wes will probably be kind of our backup nose. And then the so. secondary and the linebackers. So linebackers we return uh, at outside Kai Fagan and Braden Herring. 
but also um, Cassius Gideon's a kid that's going to play a lot there. And then Don Brinkley is a kid that's worked extremely hard in the off season, and um, he'll be kind of transitioning from a DB down to that outside linebacker spot too. And then in the secondary, with corners we'll be having we'll have Buzz Dover, we'll have um, Avion Blackwood, Sarad Musgrove, and um, Jay Lardy has been playing some spots there. And then we have Braden Mott who uh, didn't play uh, a whole lot. His, we didn't play at all his sophomore and junior years. We played for it as a freshman. He'll he'll be fighting for some time there. Um, and then safeties, Roman Pearson and Murphy Clement are back with uh, Zion Grantham, um, Malachi Williams, and Jameer Hunter in those spots as well. I want to make sure that we don't forget the uh, special teams because I've mentioned uh, a couple times on the sports mix that I think the biggest question this year is who's going to be the returner on punting and kickoffs due to Hudson being gone. So. Who will uh, that most likely be this year? Will we see a rotation of a few guys? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have a bunch of guys that uh, can do that. Sarad's looked really good returning returning kicks in the spring and um, in June. And then um, Avion Blackwood, um, Roman Pearson, uh, Murphy will, will take some of those every once in a while. And then um, so Jameer Hunter will, will help do some of that as well. So it'll be kind of by committee. And then um, – you know, I hope people kick them, kick it deep to them, but uh, and even punt it to them. So because I think they all have some experience, and I think we told Avion to get away from one up here last year, and he picked it up and returned for a touchdown. So he, he's pretty good <laughs> at uh, at that as well. And an, another guy that uh, I believe got a few offers this uh, off season, your linebacker Cam Shallis. Uh, what have you seen from him so far this year? Is he kind of takes a bigger role on in the middle of that defense. So Cam won our Iron Dog Award, which is our offseason uh, player that's worked the hardest. Uh, so he, he put in a lot of time in the offseason, and, and, you know, he has in his whole career, and he's just been a leader for us. And coming back as a leading tackler, I, I mean, we expect the same from him. Um, and something that's been really good this year is, you know, the defense has been new for, for a little while. It's not new anymore. So, you know, I think it came to a peak there in the championship game with the five picks and, and pressure that we put on uh, Huntington's quarterback. But, you know, now we came in in June, the kids knew it. They bought into it. And so it's not been new anymore. But he's the quarterback of that unit. So he gets everybody in place. He gets everybody going where that they need to go. And, um, you know, he's going to he's gonna have some other guys in there with him, Jimmy Harden and uh, New, New Houston and um, – um, AJ Harrison playing in that, those spots with him too, and and uh, you know I think they're all really capable and and really good athletes that will put a lot of pressure on on offenses. All right, Coach Th Sherman, thanks for the time. We'll be back for more next on EPAC All Access here from Coburn Field. Hello, this is Mark Sutton of the Sutton & Janelle Law Firm. The right attorney can make all the difference in your case. That's why you should call Sutton & Janelle. We have been serving clients in West Virginia and Maryland since 1999 in the areas of family law, DUI, criminal defense, and personal injury. Sutton & Janelle works hard to obtain a favorable outcome for you at a reasonable rate with affordable payment options. Sutton & Janelle values your rights and is passionate about your success. Contact us today at suttonandjanelle.com. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here from Coburn Field at Martinsburg High School here for, with the Martinsburg Bulldogs. Spencer we call him McLaughlin, Nick Verzellini. Happy to have you with us. Now joined by quarterback Ezra Bajan. And Ezra, last season you guys were able to win that state championship. And uh, obviously ninth state championship as a school, but you, you kind of just turned the page to this season 0-0 zero zero as a team, new mentality, but uh, still bring in that Bulldog mentality. Yes, sir. We're still bringing that Bulldog mentality. And we're really excited for the year and to show what we can do. What are you excited about the most this season? I'd say the athletes that I have at wide receiver, for me at least, that I'll be able to spread the ball around a lot. How do you, uh, or what did you, I guess, want to work on this off offseason? Uh, we talked to the coach, and it's really the first real one Martinsburg has had in, in the state and really all the country has had uh, with COVID and everything, uh, like a full off season. So what were some yeah. things that you wanted to work on? Um, I'd say arm strength and just standing in the pocket strong. And how do you those feel like things. you've improved on those things? Yeah, I think I've improved a lot, and I'm excited. And, you know, we bring up off season. We would be remiss not to bring up the ability that you had to do things with your brother in Tyson Bajant this off season. How much have you learned 
from him not only this off season but really you know the last four five six really your whole life yeah i've learned a lot from him he works really hard and he's a perfect role model for me and i want to do exactly what he's doing so perfect role model senior season for you this year uh what are the goals that you have in place for you um i'd say just be good every single drive just stay consistent and take care of the ball how about for the team um I think we want to be. I think we want to have a. We want to. We don't want to lose a season like we did last year, and yeah, I think that we just want to um, blow some teams out this year, like like Highland Springs and Salem and teams like that. Beat them by more than a couple touchdowns, maybe. Uh, you, Spencer mentioned learning from Tyson and what you were able to do this summer, and I know you got to work with a lot of different. Uh, quarterback guru coaches and stuff like that what were some things you were able to take away from them that you think can help you this year yeah I'd say just everything just how they taught me like footwork stuff like that and just taking it all in like it's not just high school like past high school in the college and stuff like that just stuff I need to work on so yeah it was good learning from them learned a lot Looking at the season as a whole, you guys just replaced Spring Valley with Bishop Ironton, same schedule, but you get to have some more home games, and your senior year, how does it make you feel knowing that you get to have more home games in front of these home fans? Yeah, on on all those trips last year, I was thinking that, all, all those big bus rides, I was just like, thank God we don't have to do this a lot next year, and I'm happy, yeah. We talked with Murphy already, and I want to get your perspective now. What's it been like for you to split that quarterback role with him and be able to not only compete against him but obviously be on the same team as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we notice each other, like how, how good we are so we can learn from each other. So that's good. And, yeah, just every single time he throws a good ball, it, it makes me want to throw a good ball. So, What are some of those things that you feel like uh, you've learned from him and he's learned from you? Um, I'd say with the running game, I've learned from him. And I'd say with like the footwork and passing game, he's learned from me. When we talked to you last time at 7-on-7s, seven uh, you had the Shepherd offer, which was new. Any other offers come in recently? or No, not any offers Just kind of waiting for yeah. the season. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for the season. Your brother got to be a uh, camp counselor at the uh, Manning Passing Academy. Did you get to go down there and watch anything or do anything, or has he told you some things that he learned from there that you are uh, taking now into your quarterback role? Um, I wouldn't say he really learned anything down there, but he definitely just got to meet a lot of guys and got to tell me a lot of stories about the people he met. And what was the first part of your question? I was just asking if uh, you oh, got yeah, to witness any of it just to see the quarterbacks down there or not. The West Virginia camp was like a day before that, okay. I think, and I didn't get to go. So, yeah. And I think they were like fully packed. That's why I also didn't go. We like looked into it, but they had a full like camp already. All right. Anything else, guys? I was going to quickly ask since he mentioned that uh, West Virginia camp. How was that for you? It was good. Yeah, it was good. I got to see the coaches. They said my names a couple times, so I was I was excited. All right, Ezra Bajan, our guest here on EPAC All Access. Thanks for joining us, Ezra. Best of luck this season. We'll be back for more next on EPAC All Access. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg has a brand new list of daily specials. Monday, stop on in for burger night or enjoy a nice juicy steak every Tuesday and Wednesday. The Palace Lounge also offers freshly steamed shrimp Thursdays and chef specials every Friday and Saturday. Sunday is all day breakfast and there are drink specials daily too. So come enjoy the Palace Lounge. You can find them on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here. Spencer Dupuy, Colin McLaughlin, Nick Verzellini. Happy to have you with us. We're now joined by offensive and defensive lineman for the Bulldogs, EJ Hendricks. And uh, EJ, another season here for the Bulldogs. You had a great season last year, getting some time on varsity, and now uh, you're going to be getting a lot more time this year. I mean, yeah, it feels great. I mean, last season, great season as a sophomore, I kind of surprised myself. I mean, I didn't really start both sides the entire year, but halfway through the year, when they started me on both sides, I did better than I expected. How tough is it playing both sides of the ball? I mean, you really got to be in condition. I mean, some of the harder teams you play that have people that don't go both sides really wears you down, but you really got to – I don't know the word, but you really got to pick it up. Have that grit. Yeah. That have that grit. dog mentality. EJ, uh, you mentioned going from your sophomore now to your junior year. Uh, 
what have you done this off season? What were some things maybe that you wanted to improve on uh, heading into this year? I mean, really putting people into the dirt. I mean, that's it's fun. Putting people into the dirt, that's all it is. But, damn. Sorry about no that. No worries. You're good. Just what finishing your plays more maybe a little bit. Yeah. Finishing your blocks. What's your expectations for yourself this year? I mean, right now I'm uh, dealing with a back injury, so I won't be starting out the year. But I'm looking to come back around that third, fourth week. But when I do come back, I'm looking to, like I said, put people into the dirt. Has that made you hungrier yes. this season now that you're going to be out for a few weeks? Yeah, knowing that I'm not going to be able to start out the season with my guys coming back, it's just that dog mentality to get after it, go after whoever has on a different color jersey. EJ, uh, you guys have a pretty young uh, offensive and defensive line. All of you are juniors. Uh, you're one of the guys that have that varsity experience. So what have you seen out of the unit, uh, and what are your kind of your expectations as an offensive line? What do you kind of want to do for uh, that side of the ball and then on defense as well? I mean, for us to have a young team, we have a lot of maturity. But defensively, we have a strong defensive line. We still have me and Aiden on the edges, and we just got a new kid named Rashad. Great guy, great kid, strong as a bull, and really looking to get after it. Offensively, we did lose those three seniors, but we did replace them with three juniors who are more than likely going to do the job just as great. All right, EJ Hendricks, our guest here on EPAC All Access. We'll be back for more interviews next. You're tuned in to EPAC All Access on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are gonna investigate your case, and we're gonna lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, skinnerfirm.com. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here at Coburn Field. Spencer Dupuy, Colin McLaughlin, Nick Verzellini, happy to have you with us. We're now joined by Murphy Clement, who's returning this year. And uh, Murphy, obviously a great season for your team last year. You weren't able to be there to finish it out as you uh, had an injury there. What, is it, what does that make you feel knowing that you're back here for another season after being able to miss the biggest game of the year? Yeah, I'm just hungry now. It sucks that I, I had to miss it, but it was nice seeing Hudson Hudson with the eight touchdowns and the rest of the team do their thing in the championship game. But, yeah, now I'm basically just hungry, ready for, the next, for, ready for this year, ready to go. Uh, two weeks now into uh, training camp. How's it been looking so far for you and the team? It's been good. We, we got, got a lot of guys, got a lot of depth, got a lot of, got a lot of guys going, going hard, doing their thing. Yeah, we're, we're good. How's the uh, foot feel? I know when you originally had the injury, uh, Coach Sherman told us even when you get back, it would probably still have a little bit of, uh, I guess, pain to it or maybe just yeah. bother you a little bit. How's it, how's it doing? Yeah, it's it's been a little sore, but nothing nothing too crazy. Gotcha. It's feeling good. Got a couple, couple more weeks left for it to, like, fully recover. But for now, yeah, it's good. And uh, getting ready to go again, basically the same schedule as last year. Just you'll be at home for a few more games, and uh, you know you got those two out-of-state teams from Virginia, and then the uh, team from Ohio back on the schedule. And you know you add that team from Northern Virginia or uh, from Alexandria, Virginia, the Bishop Ironton, and then bring in Chirando again. Uh, that out-of-state, out-of-conference schedule, obviously an important one for you guys because. You need more games than just the EPAC, yeah. and it's the competition level that is something for your team that you need is those teams like uh, the teams that are ranked highly in each state. You yeah. get to see them another time. What's your what are you taking into those two those games this year? Um, just just re ready for them. We're, we we saw them last year. We got film on them. We sort of know what they have, so we just have to go in, do our thing, not make mistakes, and do. How, play how we know how to play. Back at the quarterback spot for you this year, what's it been like continuing to work alongside Ezra? He, it, it, It's nice. It's nice to, because I'm on defense too, have a little break when Ezra's in and not have a fall off or anything. Ezra's very good. He, he can throw the ball. He, he can do everything I can do. 
and it's nice to have set, have someone else there too. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the defense. Uh, you guys lose a few guys up front uh, on both sides of the ball, but um, still have you and Cam back on defense. Uh, you lose your brother Hudson. Obviously, graduation. You have EJ Hendricks up there on the D line. Uh, how's the defense looking? Uh, how do you feel about the unit this year? Anybody stand out to you that maybe uh, we didn't see a lot of last year? Yeah, I, I think we're we're looking really good. We got a new guy, Rashad Reed. He, he's going to be a problem this year for sure. He's he's D line. He's big, big, strong, fast, physical. Everything you need in D line. And our our secondary is very fast, very quick, good hands. Ball hawks, we can we can hit. I th I think we're our defense is gonna be really good this year. One of the best defenses in the state last year, as well with all that physicality and speed. Uh, but we also mentioned that you're an offensive guy as well. Which one do you prefer more, offense or defense, and why? Um, honestly, I, I like scoring touchdowns, but I probably go defense. I like tackling. I like I like catching it. I don't do a lot of catching on offense. I like being able to catch picks, tackle them, hit them hard. I like doing all that. And you guys obviously get that state championship last year. How do you, as an individual, improve? What's your kind of mentality? What improvement do you think you need to make going into this year? More of the throwing aspect of, of QB. I need to work on that. My reads a little bit. And then just having knowing, knowing every, every position on the field, knowing what everyone's doing. Just more mental than physical this year. Getting to see a uh, possible 10th state championship team this year, you think that's a achievable goal? Yeah, I, I think it very much is. But for right now, we're just focused on Salem. First game, we're ready to go out, get them. Got to, got to get them. How do you feel about uh, some of the wide receivers you guys haven't coming back? Obviously, you lose Hudson, you lose Kai Walker. Uh, what have you seen out of the wide receivers though that you do have coming back and maybe some new guys as well? Yeah, we got Rome, Rome coming back, and then we got this new dude, J Jameer Hunter. He's going to be a problem. He, very fast, great hands. Rome is very fast, had the 4-3 at the Virginia camp or Virginia Tech, one of them. And, yeah, we got a lot of receivers, Sarab Musgrove, Amar Dover, all of them. Final question, what has your summer experience been like? I know you made your rounds at a couple summer camps. Uh, saw you uh, won some cleats, I believe it was. Yeah, um, I, I have them over there. But, yeah, it, it was nice. It was a great experience to go out to Michigan, have, go at the big house, see how big that stadium is. A lot of um, a lot of great um, coaches talking to all of them, a lot of experience, all of that. All right, Murphy, thanks for the time. We'll be back for more on EPAC All Access next. You've put up with your water long enough. It's time for Sunset Water Services, your local water solution since 1989, to fix your water problems. Get better tasting, better smelling, and better looking water today. Say hello to drinking your own delicious water for pennies per gallon. Say yes to healthier skin and hair and to softer and brighter clothes. Sunset Water Services delivers your bags of salt to you, so they'll save your back too. And our products come with a one-year satisfaction guarantee. Call 304-754-9031 for a free water quality test today. Sunsetwater.com. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here from Coburn Field. Spencer Dupuy, Colin McLaughlin, Nick Verzellini, happy to have you with us. We're joined by Bulldogs linebacker Cam Shallison. Cam, last year you guys were able to win another state championship, but uh, talking to Coach Sherman, he said, you know, this team is 0-0 zero and zero right now. What's your mentality heading into this season? 100%. I mean, our our team motto is just uh, one game at a time, and that's that's how we've gone throughout Pat, this last season, and that's how we're going to go this season. What are your uh, expectations for? Let's start with uh, yourself and then get into the team as a whole. Um, I mean, I just obviously every year you want to do better than how you did last year. So I'm hoping to to capitalize on the things I did last year and do. That might it. be tough to do. <laughs> it might be, but I'm, I'm I've worked pretty hard. This whole this whole group's worked really hard in the weight room this past off season. So I think I think a lot of us are going to do some special things. And Coach uh, said that you won the award for best off season. So what were some things that you wanted to do this off season so you can reach that goal? Because you were the leading tackler for this team, so you're going to have to do that again and, and do it even better, I guess, if you want to really improve from last season. For sure. I mean, the Iron Dog Award was definitely an honor, and it was some something that I was always uh, striving to get, and uh, getting that was, was something special for sure. Um, Going after last season, I was really working on my speed and um, changing my body throughout the season. 
Um, and I feel like I did a pretty good job of that last season. But this season it was more just building on that frame that I that I set up for myself last season. I feel like once again I did, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job on that. I've got my weight up a little bit more, um, working on getting stronger and um, a little bit faster as well. And we talk about how great of a season you had last year that led you to be able to do some things this summer, including go to a camp at West Virginia, and I believe you got a preferred walk-on offer. Yes, sir. How does that make you feel knowing you're seeing the fruits of your labor, especially from the team here in West Virginia? I mean, it's awesome. I mean, Martinsburg and, and teams in West Virginia haven't necessarily gotten that level of respect that I feel like we deserve, and I feel like a lot of us, not just me, a lot of us work hard to get – to get that chance and to get that honor. I mean, that, that WVU camp was great. I've gone to a couple of different other camps and um, out of state and, and, and such things, and those have been great too. But, I mean, going to the WVU camp and, and receiving, that's just something totally special, being a dream school in, in, in your home state school. You're one of the defensive leaders this season for Martinsburg. What is it like uh, having to lead the defense out there on the field? I mean, it's 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 awesome. This is a great group of people. I mean, we've just been working out here this whole time. It's it's really more of a family at this point. I mean, like I said, this 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 off season, we've really uh, came together. Um, one thing I like to say a lot is that is that it's not just us players; it's the coaches too. I mean, the different di di different defensive coaches. For example, Coach Jenkins, the outside linebackers coach. Me and him lift uh, lift together every single day, and to, and to get to do that with him and and to come together. And to get to lead this group of people again this this season is just something really special. What do you like about the guys around you in terms of what they can do on the field and uh, how you feel the defense will stack up compared to maybe years past? I mean, it's there's not much to not like. We got we got speed, we got strength. It's it's a great combination of all that. Our uh, our secondary is, is re looking really good this season. We've gotten a lot faster there, a lot stronger. Um, we can, we getting somebody like Buzz back, Amar Dover, and that's that's going to be a great addition. Uh, Rashad Rashad's going to be great uh, in in the middle, taking up blocks and and hopefully getting me open. But obviously he's going to get his own. He's going to he's going to eat in there, and then having EJ and Aiden like last year is just it's just something really special. So that defense coming together is just going to be something awesome to watch and you had a big impact on defense last year but it's not to overshadow your impact you had on special teams you had that block kick or block uh, field goal return for a touchdown last year how much if any are you going to still be on special teams this year uh, I, I take pride in special teams I think so does coach so does coach Sherman for sure I mean that's one of his that's one of his big uh, key points uh, special teams are just as important as all as, as the other two so um, I'm going to try and keep my roll up on that it's always it's always great to get a couple extra tackles whenever you get the chance as well. Is there a uh, competitive nature out there amongst you guys to see who's the first to get to the quarterback or the most tackles or anything like that in the game? Yeah, it's super competitive as you can tell. I mean, we got we got some great athletes out there, so it's always it's always hard to get there fast. Um, but uh, but we like we like joking about it every once in a while and competing with each other. So it's it's definitely it's definitely a great time. When we talked to Coach Sherman about the defense, he had mentioned how. The scheme isn't new anymore for the guys. You know, the first few years it was kind of still a transition. Uh, how do you, I guess, feel about your understanding of the scheme and how that this year you think that could help you maybe reach some of those goals that you have for yourself and for the team? So my my sophomore year was the first year that we that we incorporated this defense, and um, that was really my year my learning year with the, with COVID gave us a little bit extra time to work on that. Um, so, so I really, I really worked on getting that down my first year, my first year starting as my sophomore year, and then this past season, I feel like after after sophomore season and then in the off season to really work with Coach Hash and Coach O to to get the defensive scheme down. I feel like we, I feel like we got really down pat, so it's almost just like second nature at this point. So we can just fly around, be fast. I feel like that's the same way with everybody else. I mean, I'm out there calling the plays uh, with, with with whatever Coach Hash is, is reading to me, but I mean, we all got it pretty down pat. I feel. Cam Schaus, our guest here on EPAC All Access. Thanks for joining us, Cam. We'll be back for more EPAC All Access next right here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Golf, let's go, kick off. Move around. Just need a couple guys catching the ball. Don't need a scout. Let's go, move. We're not walking on the field. Run. Let's go, move around. 
Couple guys catching is all we need. X, you're good. As long as, as long as we're not kicking it anywhere near you, I'll put you in there. Can't be on the line either. Too deep. Too deep. It's not a bad deep across. Coach Jenkins need a yard line here. Let's see what yard line we're on. Oh, and this side, Cash. Hey, remember, fives are on uprights, fours on hash, threes in between hash and numbers, numbers sideline. Remember, deep, fast, squeeze to the ball, don't run past it. Front line, fast, fast to the 30, butt to the return side. All right, so it's this side, right? Butt to that side. Physical basketball, and remember, you can always box out if you miss, just like our drill. There you go. Ah, go attack it. Let's go, hey, catch it there. Hey, you ever played outfield? You ever played little league or anything? All right, hey, base, be like a baseball outfielder. As soon as the ball goes off the foot, start breaking to it. Hey, here, hey and here's what you got to do, too. Who's going to speak? Say, hey, I'll, I got it this time. I'll speak. You, you, you. Me, me, me. Again, one more time. Let's go. Hey guys, remember, we don't block them in practice. We don't even get close. Get to the line as fast as you can. Get to the wall. Widen out, Aiden. You're going to be a little wider. Go, 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 go. Go, get to the numbers. Get to the numbers. Hey, get to the numbers. Block back to the hash. Start with your hands. You heard him today. Blindside blocks. Hands. But here's the thing, Zerks. You only get to the hash, that's going to be a block in the back every time. Get to the numbers, block back to the hash. Hey, and that's our fault. We need to line them hey, about 30 yards is where you all need to be. 30 yards from the ball is where you need to be. Depending on the week, we scout the punter, but 30 yards is an average high school punt. So we're going to block everybody out, but here's the thing. You guys are force guys, okay? You guys are going to pop up and try to two-gap, okay? You guys are making sure the wings don't go anywhere. You're still making sure of a fake. And then we're gonna take them out. But you gotta start outside, all right, and then take guys out of there, okay? So you got the tackle, but you still can't get outflanked by the wing if there's a wing there, all right? And also, you don't have to take him that way out, okay? If he's on this side of you and you got him, ride him and take him out that way. Just get him out of the middle. We either fair catch it or we take it up the middle. All right, let's work it. And we also stay a half yard off the ball just in case they try to hard count us and we do jump a little bit, then we're not off sides. Kick it real high if you can. Ready. Hey, I did that on purpose. Go up and either fair catch it or you go up and Peter pan it. All right, Peter Pan, fly away. All right, now, don't go anywhere, Wes. You're, you're staying in here. Brady, you'll go there with Eric. Go. Go out to the numbers. You guys go out to the numbers. Go. All right, now, our field and all turf fields are pretty easy to line up on. What, what yard line is the PAT line? Three. You guys know? Is it the five, Eric? Because you guys are on the five. What line are they lined up on? Three. Then get up on the three. Hey, when all else fails, look in. Look down the line. Make sure you're on the line. All right, look in, look through. Make sure you're on the line. All right, you guys are good. You ought to be able to line up easy on a turf field. All right, remember, one step. All right, you guys here are most dangerous threat. You got them, coach? Get deep as you can. You're vertical and trying to two gap. Just stopping momentum is all you're trying to do. All right, I'll give you the call. This might be a little bit different without a T, maybe a little easier. You're here, you make the call, and then you're either getting a snap and running the fakes, or you're going down quick. You gotta only be set for a second, and we're kicking it. Eric, you gotta go. You gotta go, hey, and Murph, you gotta want like, to get a little pump, but you gotta run, all right? Hey, in your alignment, don't be way back. Get out wider. All right, all that good stuff. All right. 
Remember, you got to help him out too. He's helping you out blocking. Mm -hmm. I'll switch you to make you block for him all the time. All right, we might might be doing that some anyway. Way he was running the ball the one day. All you got to do is beat him inside, Jameer. You beat him inside, get vertical. You don't have to come way in. All right, as long as you can beat him inside and get there. Beat him inside and get there. Good, hey, good over exaggeration. You may not have to do it that quick, but it's a good over exaggeration. All right, good over exaggeration. Catch it the first time now. Catch it the first time. It's like Al Toon. It's like old Al Toon. He, Coach Jenkins is a safety. Which way is he going to go? Still like him slots. If it's one safety, I still like him slots. All right. Now, if you got one on one, that's fine. Something pressing, something like that on those guys. Hey, hey, Buzz, Buzz, 15. I need 15 hard yards on that. Five up and 10 in. Then once you get 10, then you can start settling. All right. But if you go five and five and settle, then that corner has a chance to read both of you. All right. I'm hoping we get 30 varsity plays, okay? Hoping we'll get 30. He usually only wants to do about 20, though, all right? So 20-0, 20 20-D. 20 all right, I'm going to try to get 30 out of him if we can get that, and then we'll get a lot of JV reps, too. Guys, we still got a lot of guys with a lot of stuff to prove, okay? Everybody here is fighting for reps, all right? You running backs especially are fighting for carries, okay? Fighting for carries. Everybody's fighting for reps in all your spots, okay? So make sure that... You get a good night's sleep tonight. You study stuff. Make sure if you got any questions about anything, let us know. We'll be in there. It's not going to be like game situation. All right. I don't even know how much no huddle will do, but um, you know we'll be out there. But still, all right. I refer, it'll be the first evaluation of uh, what we are this year tomorrow. All right. All right. Get a break. Let's go D. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here as we wrap things up from Coburn Field. Spencer Dupuy, Nick Verzellini, Colin McLaughlin, happy to have you with us here at Martinsburg Bulldog football camp getting ready for the season. We'll have all the Martinsburg Bulldog football games for you on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is the home of the Martinsburg Bulldogs. And uh, we'll get to see every single one. It's going to be another exciting season for these Bulldogs, Colin. Yeah, this team's the team to beat in the state. Nine-time state champions looking for the 10th. And it's definitely possible for these guys. they got a lot of guys coming back. I know Coach Sherman said it's not last year's team. you got to... Remember that they haven't done anything, so it's a zero and zero mentality to start off. But it's a lot of the same guys. This senior class is going to be impressive as well as the junior class. We heard a lot of things about the new guy in Reed, so it'll be uh, pretty awesome to see how he does coming in as a Bulldog this year. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see Ezra and Murphy just absolutely on that offensive side put up crazy numbers, especially with his teammates that they got yeah I mean it's pretty crazy that you know Ezra and Murphy did what they were able to do last year as just junior and sophomores uh, so you'd think you know this year they really take a big step forward uh, especially that full off season that we talked about you know actually having a normal year uh, to improve your game so uh, I think that those two in particular will be really fun to watch a quarterback but I mean this team's got a lot coming back it does have some guys that it will need to replace, but like we talk about all the time in Martinsburg, it's not rebuilding, it's retooling. And uh, they'll have definitely another really good team that will be the favorites to win the state championship, be a tough uh, game each and every Friday night, and, and probably either go undefeated again like they did uh, a few years ago, or they'll you know be a one-loss team maybe if they slip up. But either way, they're going to be uh, – probably the top ranked team in the state and have a great chance 
of winning the state championship again, but that's all on paper, right? They have to go out there and prove that and do that. And I think that's kind of the message that this team has each and every year. Is We heard that from Coach Sherman. Yeah. We're 0-0 zero zero right now. We, we have know we have the talent to win the state championship, but talent only gets you so far. Uh, you might be talented enough to beat up on you know smaller schools or stuff like that, but when you get into – those first few weeks, I mean, they kick off with a big game. So yeah, right do. off the bat, you know, you can't just use your talent to beat teams like that. So I think that will be uh, what Martinsburg's out to prove, and that's kind of what they're going to have to do if they want to repeat and, and win another one. And not only did we hear that they want to beat every team, they want to destroy every team. They were even uh, – we were talking about the Highland Springs game. That was a one-point game, and we were told that this year they want to beat them by a couple touchdowns. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, – that uh, gets spoken into existence from these guys. It definitely will be. And, again, you know, look at that schedule. Mere almost of last year, you switched Spring Valley with Bishop Ironton, a private school out of, excuse me, Alexandria, Virginia. And so you, then you got Salem out of Virginia, Highland Springs out of Virginia, Sharando out of Virginia, Riverside out of Ohio, the, those teams they all played before in last season, and they were able to get big victories. But now you have more home games. And we talked to Coach Sherman. He, he said, you know, that's you know it looked crazy the way I set up the schedule originally, but now you have these big teams all coming into Coburn Field on the same exact year and ready for this Martinsburg community to show out or for them to show out to, for this Martinsburg community. Yeah, and that Highland Springs game as well as Salem, those are two teams that are listed as top 10 teams in the state of Virginia, so really got to look forward to those ones, and they get to be home games this year, so come out and uh, watch them, and if you can, obviously, hope you enjoy on uh, Talk Radio WRNR, TV 10, or WRNR TV on YouTube. Yeah, and you know, you look at some of these guys, they, they bring some guys some guys into this program, you know, just the, the pedigree of this program attracts so, some people as well, you know, you see Jameer Hunter, who is transferring in from Spring Mills, on a, you know, another EPAC school, and he could make a, a big mark in this receiver core that you know kind of you look at it has maybe a, the number one question mark on it who's the number one receiver with Hudson Clement gone and you know you you put in the guy like Jameer Hunter who scored right here on this field against Martinsburg last year when he was with Spring Mills I don't know if there will necessarily be a number one receiver like I don't know if we'll see one guy have a Hudson Clement type season but I think we'll see a lot of different guys uh, be productive and make plays and it might be more of a balanced, you know, numbers-wise receiving core than what we saw last year when Hudson was really their main playmaker offensively, especially there after Murphy got hurt. You know, he was the guy that Ezra looked to and to make plays, uh, and really the entire offense looked to make plays. But I think, you know, this year with maybe a little bit more experience in the other receivers and, and just some new guys that are – out to prove some things. We'll see kind of a, a balance of maybe one to four receivers putting up Hudson Clement type numbers, but it might be one game it's one guy and the next game it's another guy. You know, different guys stepping up in different times I think is a good possibility just because I don't know if there is just one guy. I mean, maybe one guy really excels this year. You know, who knows what will happen, but that's kind of how I think it looks like. And based on what we've heard from the quarterbacks and stuff is that they like a lot of different guys at receivers not just maybe one or two big playmakers so uh that will be a big part of this offense and defensively i think they're going to be even better than they were last year based on what we've heard uh led by cam chalice in that middle reed the big nose tackle i think is going to be a big part of this team you know fleming and hendricks are back on the interior defensive line or the exterior defensive line on the edge there and then they got a lot coming back in the secondary so I think the defense is going to be a, a huge part of this team, and they might even score some points on the defensive side a lot this year too. Which is crazy to think because offensively, they averaged, I think, or in total, excuse me, not just offensively, 48 points per game last year. So if they can do more than that, these are going to be some blowout games, not just the ones around the EPAC, but all 10 possibly. Yeah, and all 10 you can see right here on Talk Radio WRNR TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as we're the home of the Martinsburg Bulldogs football team. And that will wrap things up for this edition of EPAC All Access. want to give a special thanks to EJ Hendricks, Ezra Bajant, Murphy Clement, and Cam Chalice for coming on, talking to us along with Coach Sherman. 
and Dylan Bishop for helping us on the production side of things here. For Nick Verzellini, Colin McLaughlin, I'm Spencer Puy saying so long. We'll talk to you on another edition of EPAC All Access.